Hey, welcome back to Tiny Garage Fabrication. Today's video, we're back to working on the Datsun 620, taking care of some busy work. So we're gonna work on cutting some rusty floors and we're gonna work on cleaning up and getting the frame prepped for its next evolution in life. So before we get into this, make sure you subscribe to my channel to check out the cleanest 620 content on YouTube. Make sure you like this video, comment on the video, share the video. What's left to do, but turn to. First evolution today is to clean all the grease and the crud off the bottom of this thing so when I start cutting it doesn't start on fire and turn me into a screaming alpha. Now let's fire up the grinder and get some of this junk out of here. Starting with the cab mounts because these things are just rusted in several pieces. I'm going to remake them from scratch. I'm going to try to rebuild them a little bit better, cut out the pieces on the plasma table, and try to form something that works better than these did. So there was a massive amount of body filler on the rocker panels, and it actually bridged over to the fenders. They were kind of joined as one with filler, and it's even worse on the other side. It's kind of showing you how much is there. I'm going to draw some lines just so I can cut straight and I'm going to work on getting this main section of the floor pan cut out. With as much rust as this had, it was impossible to find out where the spot welds were. So the best course of action was just to grab my air hammer with the chisel bit and just ram through all of it and basically just kind of shear the spot welds in half to get this thing out of there. Onto the inner rocker panel. Now, once again, I don't know where these spot welds are, so I'm gonna go ahead and just get my grinder and cut all the way through everything, as well as using a screwdriver to kind of clear stuff out of the way and search for holes. Uh, the holes will show me where the metal is so bad that I'll have to cut it out and not reuse any of it. And as you'll see, there was a lot of that. Now I know I'm going to cut the rocker panel completely out, so I want to add a brace to the cab so that way the thing doesn't fold in like a clam. So I'm going to go ahead and grind a couple spots, put in a piece of angle iron, weld it on either side on the A pillar and the B pillar. So when I remove the lower support, the cab doesn't just, you know, close like an oyster. Now I'm attempting to use my spot weld cutter so I can get the seat brace out of here. This little bastard just kind of skitters and skirts all over the place and it's... Fuck you! Really a pain in the butt to use. So, get after it with the air hammer and just smash those spot welds. Now I'm really going after the floor with the screwdriver, just kind of whacking it pretty hard so that I know where it's thin enough that a screwdriver will go through and that will kind of let me know where I need to draw my lines to cut out all the bad stuff. Let's me know how much good metal I still have in there, which as you can see is not a lot. Thank you. 
Next up is the rocker panel. I decided to cut out the entire thing, inner, outer, plus a little bit of the A and B pillar lower supports because they were pretty rotted through. So I'm gonna remake little extension pieces. I've got new rockers on the way and I'm gonna make a new inner rocker from scratch. As you can see, that support really helped keep everything on the straight and narrow. One last bit to cut out the lower A pillar, kind of like the hinge pocket, I guess you could call it. Now this is a trick I use, this is a regular hacksaw blade, and that's so that I can get that last little piece of metal without having my grinder or the cutoff wheel slice into metal that I don't want to cut into. It takes a little bit of time, but it gets the job done really well. All done with the cab, decided to take it outside and working on the frame now. Going to pull everything off of it and get this frame absolutely as bare as possible. Starting with the leaf springs, the rear axle, the parking brake lines, and moving to the wiring harness, the brake lines, the fuel lines, and then we'll take it up to the front suspension. The last time you saw this front suspension, it wasn't as neat looking as it is now. I have fully powder coated everything and I have zinc and chromated all of the hardware. And I will show all that stuff in more detail in a later video. Now, as per any nearly 50 year old truck, there's gonna be some oil and some junk. So I went ahead and scraped it off. I used some degreaser and some brushes to kinda of cut through the oily part, then sprayed some more degreaser on it and stepped it up to a pressure washer. Now I used the pressure washer to get off the scaly, loose, kind of crusty rust that was all over every square inch of this frame. I could have hit it with a wire brush on a grinder, but that takes a long time. It's messy, it's loud, it's hot. Not as enjoyable as this, and this actually did a really good job. Here's the Rust-Oleum Professional Oil-Based Enamel. This is the Rusty Metal Primer. It works really well just direct to metal. Use this as a first coat. I'm using the brush to get all of the fillet and tight corners, and then I'm using a two inch foam roller to get the majority of it. Here I'm cutting off the rear leaf spring attachment points, as well as two other small brackets that won't really serve a purpose in the future. Now I'll flip the frame over and do painting on the top side. And the temp's really starting to go up here. You'll see on my phone, sort of kind of see on it. Temp's 95 degrees outside, has a little feels like icon, says it's 106. That was this day, and it continued to rise over the next two days that I was out painting this frame. Which is why the video doesn't show every single inch of the frame being painted, because yeah, nah, I, I ain't got time for that. Not in this heat. Now that the frame and the paint have been baking in the sun for the past couple of days, it is incredibly hard. It does need touched up in a couple of spots and some of the paint needs ground off because I will be welding a couple of brackets on and the entire underside of the frame still needs to be painted as you can see some of the red primer. But I'm really happy with this. It's a great semi-gloss black and it's really gonna set this thing off. Well, I'd like to say that that was a lot of fun, but I'd be lying. Truth is, that's disgusting work. Cutting out all that stuff, it's not easy. The spot weld drill that I have, just, it, it gets the job done, but it's a pain in the butt to use. And then all the cutting and the grinding, it's loud, it's dirty, it's gross, it, you know, gets all over everywhere. And then as far as the frame goes, it's been in the triple digit heat here. It's way too hot to sit outside and continue working on that. So I'm gonna have to put the frame off for a little while. However, I've got a really cool mod that I'm doing to it. As you can see, I cut off that rear leaf spring perch, which means you might not be putting the same leaf springs back on this thing. So stay tuned to see what kind of crazy idea I got planned for all of that. As far as the cab, I'm waiting for some rocker panels to come in because that's kind of the base for getting everything aligned and the floor started. Once those come in, I'm gonna start, you know, hammering, cutting, bending, and bead rolling some metal. We're gonna make some custom floor pans. And I know you're gonna like those if 
you're a Datsun enthusiast, so stay tuned for that as well. All right, I think I've had enough fun and I've sweated through enough clothes lately that I'm gonna sign off here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified when I upload new videos, like this video, comment on the video, share the video, and that's it. Thanks everybody.